Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create the button that when you press it, it'll select which, um, it'll tell it to move in that direction. So for that, we're going to use button 8. And we're going to put it right above this one right here. So we're going to check to see if button 8 is pressed and button 1 is not. So if that's the case, then we can go ahead and we'll change flag to 1. So we'll have flag 0 be when we're in like randomly selecting going through the roulette process and one will be when it's actually moving in that direction. So later on we'll have a part of our code that when it flag equals one it'll go through and move in the direction of roulette. Um, and this flag zero just makes it so that way and like here we have this and flag equals zero so it won't be changing um, the whole time that flag is one. So that way it doesn't like part way through change directions on you or anything like that. Um, and then what we'll do in addition to this is we'll have the buzzer um, make some noise so that way you know that you actually pressed it. So we'll go through and we'll have a little um, song play. So it'll do four buzzes, each getting in higher, higher pitches, and then a little bit of delay afterwards. And then once we do that, we're going to reset our timer. So this timer is going to be used in our movements so that way we know where we started from. So we're sharing the same timer variable here and here, but we'll be using them for two different purposes. So when flag is equal to zero, it's used to measure how often to change. When it's used up here with flag equal to one, it's used for measuring how far along it's supposed to move. So now we've got our kill switch, we've got our direction selection, and the randomizing. So now we can go through and start doing the movement part. So the movement happens when flag equals one. So right here we'll create an if statement where if flag equals one, and here's where we'll do our actual movement codes. Um, so we're first going to check and make sure that we're still within our time limit. Because if we aren't, then we need to do something different. So we'll create this variable stride um, of the top of our code. This one will be how long it moves in each direction. So up here at the top, we'll create another variable. We'll call it stride. So int stride equals 1000. So it'll default to moving for one second. You can go through and make it smaller if you want to have to do like more movements or bigger if you want it to move you know, long distances. So now back down here, we have all our variables for this setup. And we're actually going to start, we aren't going to do the if yet, we're going to start with the else. So the else for this is after that one second, we want it to switch back to flag of zero. So that way we'll get back to doing the cycling. So it'll be flag one, it'll come through, after stride amount of time has passed, we'll switch back to flag zero, and then that'll let roulette start back up here, and then it'll keep cycling through. Um, so now we've got it to where it'll do a movement for one second, except for we need to program in the movement part. All right, and for that, what we're gonna use is a switch statement. So here, we're gonna create our switch. So what a switch is, is it's kind of like a whole bunch of if statements stacked together, except for the code's a little bit simpler. So the way it works is we'll do it like this. So switch roulette, um, and then we have these case, then a number, and a colon. Then we do our code that we want, and then a break. So the way it works is it will effectively does the same thing as checking to see if roulette is equal to zero. And if roulette is equal to zero, it'll do this part of the code. And then after the break, it'll exit out, and it'll go to whatever comes after the switch. So if we go through and we add in all of our different cases, so we have case one, we have case zero. So now, depending on which mode it is, this one will have it go forward, this one will have it go right. We can add in our back and left. And now it'll go through, and depending on what value roulette is, because we said roulette's a number between zero and three, it'll go in a different direction. So now we have the values get set, so now we just need to do the send. So we'll do a codrone.control at the end of our switch statement. So now we'll go through, we'll do code drone control 50, so that way it sends the information to the drone. And now for however long the stride is, it'll move in the roulette direction and it'll just send it on to it. 